Stretching used to be a... For a while, I tried to make it part of my show. In the morning, I'd start... I mean, because it's so important, and I've kind of gotten lazy on it or just forgetful about it or too tired to do it or uh, whatever reason. But I haven't uh, been doing my stretching routines nearly as much as I'd like to. And I... Uh, uh, I mean, I've been working out fairly well, but, uh, it's kind of tough when your schedule's kind of changing a lot and your sleep's changing a lot and you're working late and waking early and, uh, yeah, it's been kind of challenging for me and maybe I haven't been as dedicated, so I'm not trying to make excuses or if I am, I am, but, uh, should get back to stretching more, I guess is my point. Good morning, Joseph. And somebody else hopped on and said, hey. Good morning, Manny. We need these vids. Well, that's so sweet. That is sweet of you to say, good morning, Sammy. And uh, let's see, let's go down to the bottom. I think we're down to the bottom. But anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy. And uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It is Monday morning. It is July 22nd, I believe. It is 8.54 a.m. my time. I think I say it a lot, but this again could be a modern day record for lateness. I say that with some pride. Always struggled with my sleeping a little bit. And I uh, was up later than I'd like and worked a lot of hours yesterday. Worked about a 12-hour shift at the restaurant yesterday. And I uh, didn't get to sleep till past midnight. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I needed extra sleep. And it felt so good uh, to sleep in and wake up and roll over and look at the clock being past 8 o'clock. Uh, laid there for a while. Wondered what I was going to do and... Got a bunch of things percolating through my mind. A lot of uh, uh, kind of finalizing the decisions I got to make. And uh, uh, hello, Maverick. Um, so I did a little praying. <laughs> did a little praying. I asked God what I should do. Was looking for specific guidance. And as is often the case, God answered, keep going. Sometimes, I must say, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for more specific answers and uh, a clear answers and tell me exactly what to do. But I think God likes to leave, uh, you know, maybe put one hand on the wheel and have one hand of ours on the wheel and uh, without some... Uh, individual choices, I guess, uh, what fun would life be? Uh, so God let me interpret what keep going meant and keep going meant get out of bed, get dressed, get my laundry done. Cause my laundry or get my laundry started at least walk to the cafeteria and get my cup of coffee. So that is what I did. And here I am, I coming at you from Yellowstone on this Monday morning. Hello, RJ. At almost nine o'clock Mountain Time, and I'm so excited to take my first sip. My hope is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, you have a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. I'm going to really enjoy my coffee today. I'm going to really enjoy my coffee today. I'm going to cherish every drop. Oh. Apparently, I've got good uh, people working with me. And they know what com what's <laughs> some things that are important to me. And yesterday, or maybe... Yeah, it was yesterday... I was told that they were out of uh, caffeinated coffee at the cafeteria. 
So I did my show from downtown, uh, from Gardner, Montana, just out down the mountain. Uh, but I talked to my main man, main man, main lady, Diane, uh, in the cafeteria last night, and she was very pleased to tell me that they got some more coffee in, and that despite uh, we have a lot of young people working here that don't know what side of the coffee, what the orange tap means and what the black tap means. So sometimes it can be confusing what type of coffee we're drinking. And I don't like to be confused about what type of coffee I'm drinking. I don't know about you. Uh, but Diane squared it away, cleaned it out, and got the uh, good stuff on the left with the black tap and the decaf on the right with the orange tap. And she was excited to tell me that she'd worked it out. And I was very appreciative. So let's have some more coffee. Again, I said before, I think the best way to be thankful or a, uh, of a gift is really appreciating the gift and letting the know, know the giver, letting the giver know how much you appreciate it. So next time I see her, I'm going to tell her how delicious her coffee was. Oh, but it's Monday morning. It's nine o'clock. Moving a little slow today. Had 12 hours in the restaurant from 11 till about 11.30. We got out of there last night. Was feeling tired at the restaurant. Was feeling a little mentally drained. Was feeling like I needed to uh, clock out. And I think we're all feeling that way. It, it doesn't do any good, uh, you know, to talk to management or to bitch to employees or to say, hey, I'm on a, in the midst of a three shift in a row because we're all doing it. We're all scheduled a lot here. Uh, it might only add up to 40 hours, but they come in big clumps where we'll do 18 hours out of 24 or is pretty common or 12 hour shifts are pretty common. And in some jobs that might be uh, more manageable. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, we're at waiting tables and walking from kitchen to corner, far corners of the dining room or have my body feeling a little sore today. Have my body feeling a little sore today. And uh, make me honestly consider some things I've got planned in the near future. Uh, my plans aren't changing too much. My plans are changing, but they're kind of happening. And the only thing that would keep me from living my plans is fear or living my dreams is fear, a fear of the unknown or fear of what might happen or fear of this or fear of that. And uh, one thing I learned over the last five years or so is not to be, not to let fear choose my, make my decisions for me. And I know what I need to do and I know what I want to do and I know, uh, what uh, I believe with my heart will be best. And I just need to work out that plan. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. RJ's saying it's the dog days of summer. I wonder where that expression came from. Is that just when summer starts feeling long? When summer starts feeling long and the day, the 80, 90, 100 degree days start adding up and the swimming pool doesn't seem quite as fun and the humidity starts getting to us. Is that what the dog days of summer are? When we're ready to go back to school or go back to regular life or go back to work or go back to uh, kind of more typical routines because the kids are back in school. Uh, I think I'm ready for all that. I think I've experienced what I need to experience and done what I need to do and I'm looking forward to kind of getting back to regular life, <laughs> whatever regular life might look like in the future, because we don't know. Mm. Oh, But today I know what I have to do, what I want to do, what I get to do. Uh, Maverick thinks it's a Roman thing. The dog days of summer. Kind of like the Ides of March. 
Uh, they have to come up with fun little names for parts of the season or months or days. Uh, but I know what I want to do today. And I think my schedule, my uh, plan, and I don't want to say too much what my plan is, but I'm looking forward to, I believe I'm looking forward to finishing out this work week and bringing a good attitude and working really hard and making some changes going forward and getting me to where I need to go and doing what I need to do while still maintaining uh, the life I want to lead, the life I want to lead. I've realized a lot and I've gone through hard times and I've struggled financially and I've struggled emotionally and I've struggled relationship wise. And I'm not saying all the struggles are behind because uh, I don't think they're ever behind because we never stop learning and without the struggles and challenges we get, uh, we probably have no excuse or no reason to learn or get better. But I think I know what I want and I know what's important and I know what I need to do to get there. And uh, so I kind of face this new week with some excitement and some anticipation, knowing things are gonna be changing and I'm gonna be going on new adventures and uh, new journeys and face new challenges and have new uh, hills or mountains to climb. Because I've climbed the mountains of Yellowstone for long enough and I'm ready to take on the mountains of real life, if you will, back home and uh, the challenges I face back home and the issues I face and, you know, cost of housing, employment, uh, parenting time, uh, you know, just all the stuff that goes on in the real world and that I miss about the real world. And there's so much I miss about the real world. The littlest things, a smiling barista at Starbucks, a soft chair at Starbucks, the squeeze I was FaceTiming with my son and daughter this morning and his mama and grandma, he was being super loving to both of them and giving them big bear hugs. Uh, and uh, made me want one of those bear hugs and one of those kisses. Cause my son Augie's a little lover. He's a, my little love nugget. And uh, uh, he needs his dad and his dad needs him. And my little daughter Eve is beautiful and is talking or saying sentences, but not really something that can be comprehended, I don't think. Although her mom and, I, and she sent me a video saying cheese yesterday. and I think she was saying cheese. Uh, but I wanna get home and hear her talk and see her sing, listen to her sing, get home and uh, see my big girls as well. And my hope is to be home uh, by next Wednesday at the latest and get back to my kids and get back to the Western suburbs of Chicago and ride my scooter across the country and uh, find housing and employment that suits my wants and my needs. My needs aren't great. Uh, as far as housing, I think I've been not spoiled, reverse is spoiled here. Uh, sleeping in a dorm and sharing communal bathrooms. Uh, and I look forward to not doing that anymore. How old is my long youngest? My youngest will be two on October 15th. And uh, I'm not planning to, Chip. I'm not planning to. I'm not planning to stay till October. I don't think I'm meant to stay till October. I don't think I'm needed here. I think they do a good job at staffing. I think since I've worked here, we've turned over probably half, at least half the staff in the dining room. And because of the draw that is Yellowstone and the recruiting power that is Yellowstone, uh, I think they have the ability to plug the holes fairly seamlessly. It's a seasonal job. It's a job that's used to plugging holes and having people call in sick or people not showing up to work and making do. And right now I think I'm needed more at home uh, than I'm needed here.
and I needed this place. And uh, I came to this place and learned some things and realized I was strong and I could work 70 plus hours in seven days and uh, work 12 hours of shifts, shifts at the restaurants and do well and bring a good attitude and work hard and mop the floors at the end of the night and take out the garbage. Um, but I have done that and I've proven that to myself and I've gotten through it and I've ridden across the country and uh, the future awaits. And my children need their data and their data needs his children. Uh, and I can't wait to see them and I can't wait to see the green grass of Illinois and the leafy trees of Illinois and get home and see my daughter off to college, my oldest daughter off to college and see my second daughter head off to high school, sophomore year. And uh, again, love on my little ones as much as my, I can. Huntington Beach says hello. Well, hello, Huntington Beach. Let's have some coffee for Huntington Beach. Again, I lived in Southern California for a while in the 90s, early 90s, I mean, for like eight months. I found I missed home back then as well. And although everyone, you know, it's beautiful there and there's beaches and there's nice weather year round, I still found myself at the time uh, missing Illinois and missing the green grass and missing family and missing friends. And uh, it's kind of the way I feel right now. And if I think about it, I get kind of excited. And I think about the stuff I need to do between now and maybe Friday morning. And I have a fair amount of work at the dining room I'm gonna get done. And a lot of waiting tables. And probably saying some goodbyes. Uh, but I'm also gonna do some investigating and looking into opportunities. And uh, starting headed in that direction. Uh, this week. So, let's drink another sip of coffee. I don't know what I have for you on this Monday morning. Got some little kids over there. I'll tell you what, there's two little kids chasing a bird over there. And I was riding through Yellowstone and riding through beautiful country and some of the most pretty country. And I'd stop and take pictures and I'd take off my helmet and take a selfie or take a picture of something or ask a tourist to take a picture of me. And the one thing I was, when I was riding through, I was riding by streams and thinking I should stop and wash my head or rinse my face or whatever. And I was thinking how much fun it would be to be with my uh, son Augie going through this area and having him play in the water and him see the cool things and him see the buffalo and him see the moose that was wallowing in a lake. And it is tough um, doing uh, it all on your own a little bit. Uh, I think one of the cool things about coming out here, it's a neat experience, but I think two months is plenty. And without somebody that you care about to share some of the beauty that you're traveling through, uh, loses just a little bit of its luster. And, um, yeah, so anyway, it's Monday morning. I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, okay, RJ's asking what route am I thinking? I'm going to go the north route. I am going the north route. I went the south route out here and I'm going to go the north, north route back. I'm gonna go through South Dakota, and all my plans are still flexible, by the way. Things can happen and things change, and they do. Uh, but I would like to hit South Dakota on my journey to the West. I touched Montana and Wyoming, which were two states I'd never been in, and uh, I'd like to hit South Dakota on the way back. Maybe leave North Dakota for some other time. Uh, and uh, check that out. But. Uh, see a different stretch of road and meet some different towns and meet different people and go a different way and experience different things and my destination 
due to a family get-together isn't the exact same as it normally would be. Uh, but it's still that way. And there's we're having a big family get-together that I think I'd regret missing. Uh, maybe the rest of my life if I wasn't there. And it's happening mid-next week. And I want to be there. And my dad's going to be there. And my kids are going to be there. And all their cousins are going to be there. And my siblings are going to be there. And it's going to be a neat, neat thing. And it was kind, it's been kind of in the back of my mind uh, for the last month or so that I'd like to be there. And I think I should be there. And I think I will be there. So not going to promise 20 push-ups. 10 feels kind of hard in a leather coat and helmet, RJ. But I don't know what I have for you today. I don't know that I need to talk anymore. I don't know if I have any words of inspiration or stories to share or tales to tell or goals to meet or, uh, yeah, just things to share. But uh, I am looking forward to my day, and I have a lot of work to do today, both in the dining room and out of the dining room. I'm going to be enjoying my coffee. I'm going to be enjoying uh, the cool mountain weather that I'm in. I'm going to be appreciating the mountains uh, because I know they're not going to be here forever. I was riding up from Gardner, Montana, and I was wondering, am I going to miss these mountains as I, when I go back home? I'll probably miss them a little bit, uh, but I won't miss them as much as I miss my kids and my friends and my family. And, uh, yeah, so uh, one more sip of coffee. Oh, I want to thank you so much for joining today on this Monday morning. I appreciate you guys hopping on, even at this a very late hour. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful week, start of your week. <laughs> hope you had a great, great weekend. Hope you're feeling purposeful. If you're not, find a little mission, a little submission, whether it's working out or losing a couple pounds or saving a little money or, I don't know hugging your loved ones a little longer uh, because all those things are going to matter. All those things matter. And uh, I don't know, having a mission makes me feel good. And uh, well, thank you so much, Lychee from London. I appreciate you. Um, but uh, yeah, again, I think life's a lot more fun uh, when you have a little purpose and a little direction and a little meaning. And for the last few weeks, I felt like, okay, I work tonight, I don't work tomorrow, but then I work again on Thursday. I was just kind of waiting between uh, shifts at the restaurant. And life's too short just to be waiting for shifts. And I'd done what I needed to do and proven what I needed to prove and saved what I needed to save and paid my financial responsibilities. And what I need to do is get home and squeeze my kids and kiss my kids and love on my kids. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing. I'm also looking forward to talking to you soon. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.